The many miles of sandy shoreline here at Daytona Beach is home to the sixth Major League Pickleball Tournament in its young history as we welcome you to Championship Court. It is the defending champs of the Challenger League, the Bay Area Breakers, taking on the Orlando's, Orlando Squeeze as we welcome you to Pictona at Holly Hill, Florida. I'm Michelle McMahon alongside my partner in crime today, Adam Stone, longtime pro. He is a fan favorite in the interwebs of the podcast space. He is Adam Stone. Adam, welcome. What are you most looking forward to in this matchup between the Squeeze and the Bay Area Breakers? Well, I'll tell you what, Michelle. Very excited to be here. MLP, there's nothing else like it. It's <laughs> the best slogan out there because it's so true. And we have two teams, as you mentioned, the defending champions, but both teams made it out of group play at MLP Mesa. So uh, very uh, capable, quality teams. And what I'm looking for here is really uh, kind of the the balance of these little less proven and the more veteran players. We have this on both both squads. Uh, Pablo Tella is a little bit more seasoned veteran and his other three teammates less proven but stepped up big at MLP Mesa. And we also have Todd Fote and Rachel Retger, a little bit more of offensive minded players with two rocks in Callan Dawson and Bobby Oshiro. A lot of contrast and styles out there. Very excited for this one. This is the first of several rounds of group match play taking place this morning and then Friday will be the quarterfinals and semifinals. Saturday will be the championship rounds for the Challenger League. The coin toss is underway between the breakers and the squeeze. Yes, and this is with this will be Group A play. The other two teams in Group A are the Arizona Drive and the Dallas Pickleball Club. All, th all four of those uh, of those teams in Group A will be playing three matches on this Thursday. We've got court coverage for you all over the place here in Daytona Beach. Over on Grandstand, we have Arizona taking on Dallas. Court three, Chicago against Utah, and court four, DC against Miami. So if you're looking for your team, we have got you covered on all four courts. Adam and I will be here on championship court for majority of the morning as we dynamic duo. Rachel Summers, by the way, has a very fascinating story. She's in medical school, is also a member of the military heading into that direction, which is very cool. And here's how the head-to-head -head shakes out. The win probability on the side of Oshiro and Wrecker, but don't sleep on Summers and Radzikowska. Team Dupers also on the edge of the side of the squeeze. But if you're gonna put your money on anyone, I don't know. There could be an upset brewing here on championship court here at 8 a.m. Yeah, definitely. Head-to-head -head powered by Duper. Slight edge uh, to the squeeze. But you know what? I'm not so sure. Uh, that one, uh, obviously close at 55-45. But I tell you what, Radzikowska and Summers, with some of their uh, limited tournament experience, really showed up big in Mesa. And it was the decision making and the consistency, a couple kind of aspects of the game that tend to come on later in your career that I was very impressed with those two, Michelle. And some key rule changes taking place here in event number two for MLP. One of those being the challenger. The challenge is on the court. Each team gets two free challenges and you can you can no longer defer to the referee. So we expect to see an influx of challenges taking place here across all courts. How do you see that rule change unfolding, Adam? No, I like it. And I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a cool aspect that we are putting everything on the challenge system in place. So we are taking out that that referee uh, uh, kind of factor. I have no doubt we're gonna see a few players <laughs> kind of bark to the referee because they're so used to that. But I think it's great that they set up this challenge system and they're also setting, uh, setting it up to use that challenge system as much as possible. So they can go beyond the two free challenges that each team is given. If they are incorrect, they will then lose a point beyond mm -hmm. the two free challenges. And we will guide you through those rules as it continues to have relevance here on Championship Court. Rachel Recker 
is bringing back the serve as we get underway. Another change is we will be playing all four games no matter what the outcome. So last event, if you were 3-0 in terms of your partnership of the women's doubles, men's doubles, and your first mixed doubles. Your difference uh, advancing from pool play once you uh, you finalize those three matches. So very important uh, aspect of the First up, we have women's doubles. As from Bay Area Breakers, we have Rachel Ava. So, from the Orlando Tweezers, we have Kelly Lee. And from the Orlando Tweezers, we have Bobby and Rachel. Give it up for your ladies. How they finish this year will determine where they land in 2024. So this is a big season for every single team, for every ownership group, and Rachel Rector is ready to go here on Championship Court. Her partner, Bobby Oshiro, made some waves recently in the PPA. Twenty twenty four, uh, very exciting stuff, and here we go. setting that up from the, from the kitchen line. Yeah, she had a couple of nice digs, but the sustained pressure from Radzikowska with a phenomenal inside out angle to, to finish that point. Down the middle for Radzikowska again, and the Bay Area Breakers were a sneaky team in the first event. Off to the races here. Yeah, sneaky is a well said word for sure because there wasn't a ton on paper uh, to think that they tournament in Mesa and they absolutely proved everyone wrong. Yeah, nice consistency from Oshiro, that wonderful low center of gravity makes it very solid for her on the dinks, uses her legs and her body as well as anyone out here. Settling in, not not surprising. Couple. Playing, so makes a little sense to get settled in. Read my mind, these early morning matches can be tough to get up and rolling for, but they play on the list. Nice job from Rector, who loves the forehand roll to the middle. One of her better shots. I saw it several times in uh, MLP Mesa, and I expect her to continue going. Yeah, same spot. Uh, Previous success uh, on that point against Radzikowska that time, uh, sailing it long, not giving her opponent an opportunity to even touch that ball and let it not let it go out. Summers seems to be the target on the side of the breakers that time. Three, six. Great spot from Rachel Summers with And in backhand with pace and spin. This is Raleigh scoring games to 21. Oh, that's two, that's two. One from Radzikowska and one for Summers up the middle. They gotta get that cleaned up. It's tough when one player's established at the kitchen line and the other one is transitioning. Sometimes there's a little confusion in the middle and we've seen that twice early on. By the way, 
Monday as a Polish national champion in the under 16. from right there. I, I would have been impressed with one division. She, 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 she's got three. Oshiro on the right shoulder previously, that time on the left shoulder. Very hard for Oshiro to read that ball. to the baseline with a little swagger and a big deep breath. You can you can really feel the tension at these MLPs, Michelle. It's very palpable. It's not just another turn. Watch. Got out. Oh, what, 11. Change in. Or is first end change five. here on championship court. Bay Area Breakers, the first team to 11. The Orlando schools with the All right, here they gather. The what advice do you think they should be receiving right now for the squeeze to come back in the crowd? The yeah, they, they haven't been overwhelmed. It hasn't Great been anything anything that they can't come back from. It's just it's just cleanliness. So I always talk about that. You have to start with that base of consistency, and then we can start kind of ramping up uh, some of the strategic uh, situations, who to attack, where to put the ball. But right now, just a few too many loose errors uh, from the squeeze. Uh, they got to clean that up, and once they do that, then they can start working on some of their more aggressive shots. Errors on their side. Mm -hmm. Could be the early start time. No wind conditions this time. Mesa was a yes. little windier. Right, and it's certainly not cold, but it's a little crisp in the morning, uh -huh. but it's going to get up into the 80s pretty much every day of competition. So uh, the, the cold weather, not an issue. Like I said so. Exactly right. Never. Opportunity for the breakers to get forward. Uh, really nice offensive pressure from the squeeze. clean winner. <laughs> she threw her hand right to her head. She knew that was a poor decision. Uh, lost her balance uh, reaching for that ball. Just should have played a soft shot and waited for a better opportunity. Well. Happens to the best of us, Rachel. <laughs> Testament to how great that shot was. Don't have to, don't have to rip it as hard as you, hard as you can to, to be offensive or to force your opponent into an uncomfortable.
gloves for backhand. Sailing on for Rector. All game long, what continues to go well on it's their just, side? It's just slow and steady wins the race. Just, uh, I think that that one reach from Rachel Summers on the forehand was probably the only bad decision I've seen so far from their squad, uh, you know, halfway through this match. So when you're when you're making good decisions and your opponents are occasionally giving you a freebie or two, it's it's a pretty pretty good spot to be in, and we can see that with uh, uh, as you mentioned a, a seven point lead. They seem to make adjustments quickly and not repeat the same error twice. Exactly. I mean, she's she's in medical school. You know, she's got a big <laughs> brain over there. So uh, <laughs> to make those adjustments on the fly is is really, uh, uh, you know, a quality aspect that a lot of these players have. Not everyone. I think she I think she wants to be a helicopter medic. <laughs> it, I mean that awesome. is that's as extreme as it gets right there. I was lucky enough to see her at a uh, a next gen series some of the younger players in the game and I was very impressed she didn't have <laughs> a lot of competition that particular weekend so uh, obviously some good talent and uh, full display on the big stage previously in Mesa and now right here in Daytona Beach. Yeah, she's showing some emotion, no doubt, and uh, maybe a, maybe a bad decision or two earlier. But uh, that ball sat up for. Her. I think it's a ball that she needs to release on and go for. She's just making a couple errors long. Got to make that tweak and uh, continue to be aggressive when she gets the opportunity. aggressive and stepping over uh, tough tough for summers to handle that but that's part of the deal as well as that. that's a good Either question <laughs> see and that's the thing it's, it's kind of it's kind of partner dependent because some left side players kind of hang out on their side some really kind of hawk the middle looking to pick shots but you can't blame Radzikowska See, we need, maybe uh, maybe that one will do it, maybe one more, and we can kind of get some momentum from Rutger, who, as I mentioned, is a pretty up and down player, but when she gets hot, she's got some very quality shots. Uh, Mid-court transition zone air, always a tough place to be. She had her balance underneath her, just just couldn't couldn't get it over. Very nice, nice hold. No place for Summers to read that ball. Great shot from Oshiro. Yeah, we've seen it on both sides now. Very early in the match, we saw it on the on the forehand side, and that time the backhand. I mean, nobody's getting that ball. The, the angle is almost perfect. Now that Redger has 
not hit a perfect dink, but not left it too high. And Magic Castle was able to create offense off of a uh, kind of neutral ball. So having that length and, and committing to, to go for some of those offensive shots is a great skill set of hers and uh, well done. Bay Area Breakers climb within one point from finishing off game number points. one in this series. she changed her spot again. So she caught the cross court uh, to the left side of Summers previously. Summers is leaning that way, and instead of going back to the well, Oshiro changes it up, and phenomenal shot by her. Two great balls on the back end. And we saw a lot of teams in Mesa get stuck on 20, Michelle. So we'll see if that situation creeps into Daytona as well. We are in the and it won't out. So this will be good. Bay Area Breakers are stuck on 20 until they can win their serve. Could be within points. The format, uh, yeah, and I was I, I was expecting a timeout. I didn't think they were going to call, but then they at the at the last minute they do. They have uh, top, uh, very very solid uh, senior pro Scott Crandall as the team coach down there. So I think he uh, uh, decided it was time to stop the momentum of the squeeze and. Yep, that freeze is a real thing. Starts to get in your head a little bit. You get on 20, lose a couple, uh, and, and that team just slowly creeps back in. And uh, it, it gets tight quick around here with this format. What do you think he's advising to his team? Uh, I, I think it's just kind of more of the same. You're, you're expecting the squeeze uh, uh, to step it up a little bit after a slow start, but there's been nothing that I've seen from the breakers that is a big switch or, or a disaster going on out there. A uh, couple nice shots by their opponents, couple loose errors from them. This is pickleball. This is what happens. I would expect them just to stay rock solid, continue their game plan. At, they're still in a very, very commanding position at 2016. Rachel Recker on serve, Summers with the return. Anticipation from Oshiro, reading the Radzikowska angle two to three times in that point. Great adjustment from her for, with her court positioning. That's right, back over. Breakers Bay Area Breakers made things close at the end, but ultimately never wavered. 21-17, the finish here as we await the men's doubles matchup. What impressed you the most about the Breakers' performance? Well, it was just it was just so solid. I, I can't even really call it spectacular because it wasn't necessarily needed in that match. Stay solid, make good decisions, and that's exactly what they did. And uh, fortunately for them, some of the offense of the squeeze was uh, not where it needed to be. And a uh, fairly comfortable win in women's doubles. Let's see what the men have in store for us. You're looking at Pablo Tellez and his partner Christian Alshan will be looking to take on the Orlando squeeze as we welcome in for the first time on our broadcast, top 50 pro Cameron Blackwood standing by with the winners. Cameron. 
of a great win for you guys. Super strong coming out of the gate here. Last MLP's MVP, the Barry Breakers, were the champions there. How much confidence does that give you, and what was the discussion with your team before stepping out on court this morning? Um, definitely a lot of confidence. You know, we've done it before. Um, we know each other now. We know what to expect. We know what we're getting ourselves into. Um, you know, as always with our coach, you know, he's brilliant, so he gives us good strategy. And then it comes down to, you know, stepping on the court and um, executing. There you have it. And Rachel, totally different weather here in Mesa, higher elevation, very cold here. We're down at sea level, have a lot of humidity. How does that affect play? Um, the ball definitely moves a little bit slower, but we're from, you know, this climate, so I think it suits us a little bit better than Arizona did. <laughs> There you have it, Barry Breakers go up one to zero. We're headed into men's doubles. Back up to you. Match point. It's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say I'm going. Dulce Vida, you are what you drank. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Sketchers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. We're back on Championship Court awaiting the men's doubles matchup between the Bay Area Breakers and the Orlando Squeeze. It is Pablo Tellez and his partner Christian Alshon on the side of the Breakers taking on Callan Dawson and Todd Fote on the side of the Orlando Squeeze in the white. Michelle McMahon, Adam Stone in the booth, Cameron Blackwood on the sideline. And we are moments away from getting started here in this men's doubles matchup. Your forte, Adam Stone. So give us the scoop. What are you looking out for in this matchup? Well, I would, I, I would look for, we have two offensive-minded players on the breakers and Alshon and Pablo Tejas. They're looking to make shots. They're not necessarily looking to grind dinks. And then we have more of the classic partnership with the squeeze. We have a rock-solid Callan Dawson. Uh, rock solid Callan Dawson doesn't miss a lot and definitely doesn't have as much firepower and Todd Fote who has definitely impressed me earlier in, in Mesa with some of his offensive skills. Here's how the head to head numbers shake out. Alshon and Tejas with a 56% win probability although Summers and her partner Radzikowska had a lower probability to mm -hmm. win and we saw how that shook out obviously very close in numbers here according to the numbers. Bay Area Breakers. Game two. I'm in. Both zero, zero. Not put an end to that thought as he brings back the serve. Just that. Definitely. And let's be clear, when you're a 56% per favorite, you still lose a lot, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> some conversation with the That's how it was last match. lead referee last here on championship court, Courtney Johnson. 
what they're discussing. Callan Dawson, one, one. sir. Back to Alshon. his power down the middle. Yeah, great two-shot combination on counters from Callan. Veteran of the game. Just long that time. Yes, he does. So no, no racket sport background, which is crazy considering both of his parents are phenomenal tennis players. He was a baseball guy. Parents are professional football players as well. Yeah, quick look at the athleticism of Alshon. But yes, Callan Dawson from Pickleball Royalty, his family. His brother Tyler used to play both his parents, top senior pros. Jennifer and Steve Dawson, who you're referring to, both parents and Dawson. Right on, right, right on cue, Michelle, we have the solid rock, Callan Dawson speeding up every other ball as we start this <laughs> match. So phenomenal analysis for me again. <laughs> Right, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you, yes, that's true. And I'll tell you what, Alshon has some has some slippery offensive shots, but in a flat out cross court dink battle, I will take the veteran Callan Dawson in that situation every day. Yes, and I played some uh, some rec games, some practice games with Teos the other day, and his the ball comes off his paddle with a lot of life. He's got some great offensive shots especially on that backhand side. Uses his length, really strong forearms and wrist get underneath the ball, creating a lot of spin. that time for Todd Fote, but a nice attempt. That's right, and whenever you miss it long, you did have the angle, so you know that you didn't make a bad decision, just poor execution. Yes. Oh, that's for sure. And a <laughs> very aggressive uh, drop there, forcing Callan Dawson into the rare error. The Bay Area Breakers, by the way, lead the way in the standings for the Challenger League. As they won Mesa, looking to repeat a championship here in Daytona Beach. Melinda Squeeze. Not too far behind, currently ranking number five in the challenge. Six, seven. Yeah, I would, I would actually, I was, I wouldn't say I was surprised, but I was thinking that Foat was going to start off on the left. Mm. So if they run into some adversity here, we'll see if they end up going with the switch at some point kind of a special format here at MLP where you do stay on your side. Why were you thinking he'd start on the left? Well, just because he's a little bit more of an offensive player. So, uh, Callan comfortable on both sides. But usually when you have that more offensive player who also is right-handed and has a good forehand, putting him on the left with that forehand in the middle can be a really good option. Yeah, if you can, you know, if Christian Alshon barely gets a paddle on the ball, you know that you hit a pretty good shot. shoulder. I think that ball might have sailed to the moon, but it doesn't matter as it clips Tejas before <laughs> before it lands. Hey. Goes for the moon again. That's how it 
Oh, and Tejas just mouthing something. You know, he got hit on the previous one. Dawson went high again on the next one. Just, just mouthing something. I'm sure it was just something sweet. Something sweet. <laughs> sweet, sweet nothing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, too, is it just loud enough so Callan could hear. <laughs> just loud enough. What a guy. What a gentleman. Anyways, the Orlando squeeze the first to 11, so we will have the end change, the Bay Area Breakers trailing. This is how the league standing system works. We mentioned the Bay Area Breakers on top. Here are how the event points are calculated. The first place team earns 12 event points. The second place team earns 11 event points. So this is why the Bay Area Breakers find themselves atop the standings, taking home the championship in Mesa. And it's the promotion and relegation system. One of the first times we've seen it here in a major sport in America, which is cool. What do you like about the current system for Major League Pickleball. No, I think it's I think it's great. And of course, as we mentioned, this being year one will be a little more settled in 2024. But it's great. Both uh, all the ownerships they're going to have. They're going to have three premier level teams, three challenger level teams of the six events this year. So I really like the point system set up and I'm excited to see kind of where it settles and which teams creep up into that into that premier level uh, uh, for next year. It's it's just exciting stuff. And, and we mentioned it earlier, every point, every game matters. And, and you can see it uh, uh, with the players' reactions and, and see it on their face. So I would actually look, I would expect the breakers to, to play a little more aggressively to start the second half of this game. They've been fairly passive uh, early on, and I would expect them to ramp up the aggression against the squeeze. Lobber in the game, Callan Dawson. We call him the Lob Doctor. You see why there. Incredible deception from Callan. Yeah, I, uh, I was. I played Callan in the tournament. My partner was Deckel Bar. He's six three. He's a very large Israeli, and uh, and Callan lobbed him about fourteen times. So if you if you can lob Deckel Bar fourteen times, you got a good lob. That's a fearless lobber if I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, let's get a little looser here from the from the breakers. Definitely, uh, I don't think they're quite fully playing their game right now. Let's step it up, boys. Hey, that'll help. Always good strategy. The dri the dribbler. That was a great serve and great drive from Alshon. So, uh, hey, Callan, he's good at neutralizing offense. We saw it on that point. Just lost his balance on that drop attempt. You, you could see uh, kind of a slight stumble after the point of contact. Exactly right, and that wasn't an obvious attack, but he pulled the trigger. I expect to see more. Uh, I would not, not sure that's a sustainable long-term long -term <laughs> strategy to drop shot Christian Alshon, but executed to perfection from Callan on that particular backhand. Try to 
avoid extended cross-court dink rallies, and that is absolutely one way to do it, is fire a missile up the middle with great topspin. is there with a great read. And Alshon, a little more spring in his step these last few points. He looks like a man on a mission out there. Uh, and, and tied up, Michelle, all of a sudden. It's getting feisty out there, Tate. That's right, and there is no backswing whatsoever. Strong wrists and forearms, like I said, he just whips through. Nothing for Fote to read, catches him in the shoulder. shaking his head. He, he slipped one through the middle. He figured he'd change up his spot and, and try the line on Todd Fote, and Fote ready with a very quality forehand counter and one point lead for the squeeze. Yeah, just, I mean, it's one step. I mean, he, he can be a presence in the middle, take one step and do and, and perform an Ernie. Incredible athleticism. It's a great attack from Pablo Tellez, who just kind of lunged at the ball at the last second and just completely catching Callan Dawson off guard. I thought he was going to go with a casual soft shot, and he went with some sneaky offense. And if Fote, Fote's hands hold up and he's ready with his counter attacks, I like the cross court pattern with Dawson versus Alshon for the squeeze in that in that dink rally. As long as Fote can handle the uh, the aggression when it comes. One on the backhand side catching Fote in the shoulder, and then on the forehand side completely freezing Callan Dawson. Uh, just really good offense and really good deception from Pablo Tellez. Come out of nowhere and finish game number two. They now have the two to nothing edge. In this matchup, how were they able to close the gap and then take control, Adam? Oh, it was a nice, dis that last five minutes was a great display of offense. I think they might have listened to me. A little passive, uh, a little a little too much uh, with the soft stuff and, and, the, and the consistent play, which is good sometimes. But when you have the skill set of those two guys, Alshon and Tellez, pull some triggers, trust your hands, trust your offense. That's what they did those last couple minutes. And, and they were rewarded with the win 21-19. So now we move into the the first mixed doubles matchup here on championship court as the breakers and squeeze lay out their matchups and once again top 50 pro camera blackwood is standing by with tayez and alshon guys go up 2-0 had a little bit of a slower start you guys were neck and neck heading all the way up there after the changeover they seemed to take a lead but what adjustments did you make in order to take this win in the first half, we played a little passive. We were trying not to lose rather than trying to win. And then the second half, we really just started playing our game, being aggressive and not holding back. It worked. It worked. And speaking of that aggression, you were really picking out your moments of when to take the ball out of the air and hit those speed ups. What were you seeing on the other side of the court to make that decision? Uh, well, you want to keep Callan guessing because he likes patterns and it worked. <laughs> There you have it, Barry Breakers go up two to zero. We are coming back into mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Introducing Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. 
They're ultra lightweight and responsive for incredible speed. They have Goodyear rubber outsoles with a specialized pickleball design for increased side-to-side -side stability and agility. Plus, they feature shock-absorbing foam and Skechers' famous relaxed fit design for incredible comfort game after game. Conquer the court in comfort. Skechers Pickleball, the official footwear of Major League Pickleball. Match point, it's all up to me. Nothing can get in my way. And when they ask, what are you gonna do next? I'll say, I'm going. Visit margaritavilleresorts.com. It's hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested. Because cleaner is better. Like Oro Organic. Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. The Pro Excel Pickleball Paddle answers the age-old question of how to get paddle speed and control with the same paddle and one grip, and this is it. Pro XR gives you more spin, greater control, and quicker reloads on every shot in the game because you always have that constant feel for that leverage and control and paddle speed that we're all looking for. Pro XR is the most revolutionary technology in pickleball. We're back on Championship Court. It is time for our first mixed doubles matchup of the morning here with the Challenger League. Group round, Michelle McMahon, Adam Stone with you in the booth, Cameron Blackwood on the sideline. It is Rachel Summers, Christian Elshon taking on Todd Fote and Rachel Recker. And reminder, one of the rule changes for this event is even if the barrier breakers are to win this mixed doubles matchup, we will still play the fourth mixed doubles matchup because that will matter when it comes to standings, point, uh, win percentage total. And that is an interesting rule change. For what reasons, Adam? Oh, no, definitely. Uh, we, we said it. Every, every game matters. Game differential is important. Winning 4-0 to winning 3-1. Uh, you can't just... I have the win at 3-0 and just kind of slough off for that fourth game. Super important with the standings. We had multi, we had a couple two and one teams not make it, a couple one and two teams make it last uh, last uh, uh, MLP in Mesa because of that point differential percentage. So we're gonna go with games and then points as that uh, as that other option. So uh, wanted to mention also that the Breakers set their lineup first. Uh, with Alshon and Summers, and then Fote and Retger were the response from the squeeze. Retger with the serve to Summers. In what ways does that maybe change things when you know you're automatically going to play that fourth game and it matters in terms of matchups and games one for tie-breaking purposes? Or does it? Yes, I think you're still, uh, I don't think it changes too much. You're still going for the team win. Now, it, it, it does matter in the standings, but you want that team win, and that's the most important thing. So I think it falls uh, down to number two uh, as the most important. Lining up for pace on the backhand, the Bay Area Breakers team of Rachel Summers and Christian Elshaw, a tough one to beat. Two, one. College tennis at Weber State University. Rachel Recker. Yes, sir. that time we'll say that much and that's going to be my main my main point of emphasis in this match is when Retger decides to speed up and go soft yeah 
big, big takeover from Todd Foe with a nice two-shot combination. Uh, big forehand to seal the deal up the middle. Uh, I like I like him sliding over and being a presence. Yeah, and it's gonna be a, a little bit of an issue for these two ladies who really like those forehand middle attacks. And when those those men are kind of lurking in the middle, it makes it a tough proposition. Two, two catch and releases. Uh, the flinger where you kind of catch it on your paddle and fling it. The first one went in for Foat, not that last one. Always tough to defend when your, your opponent flings the ball, comes off with a lot of extra pace. Yeah, so we'll see. Can, can, can the ladies make an adjustment and, and mix up their spots and go line and keep these guys honest? Or are they gonna continue to attack up the middle at the male forehand? Very tough to do. The, yeah, I was just going to say, sorry, Michelle, that I, I, I like that slide to her right. I think she had a decent look at that ball. And Christian Alshon, once again, creating a lot of spin as that ball was very low to attack, but he pulled it off. Yeah, it was a, uh, always a nice spot to go with the non-dominant foot in, when you're in the transition zone. So right-handed player, go with that left foot. Very tough shot for them. That's right, and once again, Summers more comfortable attacking middle. That's the Fote forehand. She is either gonna have to be a little more patient or she's gonna have to switch her spots occasionally and go line to keep him honest. of Chicago tennis team. He's the national champion there. You can hear Rachel Regger telling herself to hit it, hit it. Uh, kind of pulling off that ball. Once you commit to that spot and that shot, got to stick with it. And again, Regger a little loose on the return air. Got to clean it up, Rachel. Playing a quality opponent here. Miss the record. The breakers tying things up. Everything on the line right now for the Orlando Squeeze. They must win this game to stay alive in this series. Exactly right. Really nice offensive shot, spin, pace, depth, uh, just really no chance for the brokers to get forward. checking with Rachel Summers to make sure that ball was in. And I think it caught the very outside of the line. Uh, pretty much a perfect angle from Rachel Retger. Let's see if that shot can get her going. You could see Summers maybe thinking he was going to attack middle, leaning a little bit to that two-handed backhand counter attack. He pushes it a, a very, very nice angle to handcuff her and force the air. Great uh, change of pace from Todd Fote. So Todd Fote and Rachel Recker, the first team to 11 as we take a mini break with the uh, end change here. And so we've seen a couple of times the squeeze get into trouble with Rachel Recker being isolated. The Bay Area Breaker is clearly targeting her. Mm -hmm. What does she need to continue to do 
to well, get the squeeze on the winning side of well, this. Well, it's the, the balance, uh, as I mentioned, of the of the decision making uh, with the soft stuff and when to speed up. And of course, just having her very athletic partner uh, step in front of her and take a little pressure off of her can, can be a nice option as well. As we welcome you inside the booth, <laughs> this is the, the face behind the voices. <laughs> Michelle McMahon, Adam Stone with you all morning long as we're enjoying some quality pickleball here at the challenger level. He's a beast out there right now. He, it's just about six or eight inches a little further over than where he started the match. Really a presence and able to cover behind himself with great athleticism and movement as well. Oh, right, right, right when I said that. Well, it's a, it's a situation that I get into. I can, I can put the pressure uh, Michelle, but I just, you know, I don't have the wingspan or some of the movement of these players, so I have trouble uh, uh, kind of covering my back. Uh, right on cue, Todd Fote, not getting that one, but uh, you see what I'm saying. Smart play by Alshon, too, to find that opening as people kick back the serve. 11, 12. Breakers climb within one. They just never go away. And I believe that there was a very minor finger wag from her, Michelle, just throwing that out there. Just warming it up. Maybe that's that's what she needs. That's what she needs, a little bounce in her step before she uh, returns. Finger wagger swagger, that's what we will call it. Yep, and that's a tough break there, nothing you can do. Just trickling over with an angle as well. Constructed points, some nice patience early on, and then Foe getting in there and not scared to occasionally attack Christian Alshon, because when he steps in front of Rachel uh, Retger, that's who's right in front of him. Absolutely, that forehand is on fire. He's even sprinkling in a few big two-handed backhand counters as well. Great pressure, great offense from Fote. They're gonna need just a little bit more. Elshon down the middle with a perfect amount of topspin. Exactly right, and to keep that ball in, very well done from Christian Alshon. does and the thing is is summers earlier when she was attacking it was at the foot forehand so now she's pulling that ball a little bit more cross court trying to force it to Retger but Retger's there with the two-hander these last handful of shots so nice adjustment from the squeeze that time Alshon catches Retger on the forehand they're kind of protecting Summers, who is transitioning forward. A nice athletic play from him stepping to his right and doing some nice damage with the forehand. Okay, Todd Folk slapping that finish across. Yeah, just the coverage, too. And some of these two-handed backhands, uh, as I mentioned, sacrificing some reach, but on the full stretch, Todd Folk creating quite a bit of power uh, with his arms fully extended. And the breakers will take a timeout as the squeeze take a healthy 18 to 14 lead. How much of an advantage is it following up your point on Rachel Recker's backhand when you're 
the female part of this partnership and can take another step over to enjoy that backhand. Oh, of course. It's a big factor in mixed doubles, uh, more in gender doubles. You're a little bit more on your side. You have to worry about forehands and backhands. But when you have that partner covering 60, two thirds of the court, you can really load up on one wing. And at this point, when Rachel Summers is attacking, uh, I'm sorry, when Rachel Retger is attacking Rachel Summers, if it goes to her forehand, that ball's out wide. There, there is not a way that Summers can be aggressive uh, uh, and Retger uh, can, can hit that on the forehand without it going out. So she's loading backhand and she's releasing on that ball very nicely right now. So uh, just a very common pattern that happens in mixed doubles and the squeeze are uh, playing it to perfection right now in this match. Retger will look to defend this lead as they close in on 21 points. of Tom Folk and the squeak from Rachel Recker yes, on the backhand. Right. I'm not sure exactly. I think squeak was perfect. That's exactly she was like, Arr. Sometimes you're just trying to do Great anything thing. to get a just paddle on the ball, and she did. <laughs> Almost got caught on that backhand from Alshon, but great defense it on both sides. It was. I like it. I think uh, it's, it's a good situation to be in quality drive. He's in the right position. Uh, sometimes you just hit it in the net even when you line it up perfectly. Game point for the squeeze to come back into this match. Elshon says no to that pot for now. So the breakers climb within four. The squeeze will take back the serve. They are in the free zone. They can only win on their serve here on championship court. Summers goes wide, so the Orlando squeeze stay alive. How were they able to do it? Well, you could see that last ball. That was the presence of Fote and the presence of the Rachel Retger backhand. You saw Rachel Summers trying to do too much and pushing it wide. Love that pattern from the squeeze with Fote in the middle and, and Retger uh, lining up that backhand. And man, what a great last five or six minutes to seal the deal for the squeeze. So now it will be Bobby O'Shiro and Kellen Dawson taking on Tejas and Radzikowska. How was Rachel Recker and her partner, Todd Fote, able to do it? Cameron Blackwood standing by with the winners. A must win for you guys here in this matchup this morning. You were able to counter with their team calling out first. Why did you choose this team? Um, I don't play so good against lefties and mixed doubles, so whoever the right side player was, that's what we wanted. And Rachel, it seemed like you had a very different aggressive tone coming out in this match versus the previous two. What was the strategy heading in? Yeah, I mean, 8 a.m. start is always a little tough. You're still a little tired getting warmed up, so I just made it a point to bring the energy and fire up as much as I could, and it worked. There you have it. Squeeze now have one point on the board against the two. We're going to be right back with our second mixed doubles. Don't go anywhere. Hard to find supplements that work. No, thank you. You need supplements that are backed by science with natural and plant-based ingredients and that are third-party tested because cleaner is better. Like Aura Organic. <sighs> Plant-based supplements made from the Earth's most powerful plants for your immune health, gut health, workouts, and more. Find out more at AuraOrganic.com. Say Vida, you are what you drank. Oh my good Lord, what a feeling. All of this joy I've been stealing. We all need someone, someone that can make us believe. Make us believe. So call me a man on a mission. I'm guilty by my own admission. Locked up, but I'll break free. No change could ever take me. Stop, don't stop, don't stop now. 
At From With Pickleball, we believe in the power of our sport to unite a community. We have introduced hundreds of people to pickleball by funding a 10-court public facility in our hometown with leagues and lessons to make everyone feel valued. We take that same approach to our business with personalized customer service and same-day shipping from our huge inventory. When you order from From With Pickleball, you're supporting a small business and a diverse community of pickleball fanatics. We have the gear you need and the service you can trust. Back on championship court, don't look now, but the Orlando squeeze still alive against the defending champs from MLP Mesa. So we have our second mixed doubles matchup coming your way here on championship court. It is the first match of the day. These teams were here at 7 a.m. and maybe even sooner. Callan Dawson, Bobby Oshiro will look to tie up the series against Radzikowska and Pablo Tellez. So in the interview with Cameron Blackwood, we heard Todd Fote acknowledge he doesn't like playing against lefties. So whatever he wants matchup be, they were going to put out. Right, he wants to be head up with the with the lady, not the not the male, playing on the left side with the with the lefty on the right side. So why is Callan Dawson a better matchup here against the lefty Pablo Tellez? Well, uh, uh, he's a, like I said, he's a veteran, probably more comfortable being in that situation. And this is an interesting matchup too because you have Pablo Tellez, a more offensive player. He can transition from gender to mixed kind of seamlessly, kind kind of a similar type of game, maybe taking a little bit more court. Uh, Callan Dawson, even though he sped up quite a bit in that men's match, he's more of a solid player, so it's a slightly tougher transition to be the offensive player in mix. Let's see what he has in store for us. Bobby Oshiro with a serve to Tellez. Was that the first point? Was it? Yes, it was. My goodness, we had a firefight, and Ashira completely missed the ball, and Dawson was there for backup. He's like, don't worry, I got you. <laughs> Great point. Former firefighter, Callan Dawson, there for backup. In all purposes of life, I want him in my corner. Exactly right. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, some of these really cool great jobs that some of these pickle players have have, have stopped doing so they can pursue pickleball yeah, army medic we got a firefighter <laughs> we got a couple lawyers good hands a couple lawyers in the player pool i mean come on man we're doing it Three, zero. dawson with the serve and a three-point lead early yeah. how about Callan dawson and bobby oshiro playing the aggressor in game number four. If they do win, we will go to a dream breaker, everyone's favorite singles format. Somebody in the crowd yelling, uh, and then they realize, oh my goodness, that might go in. Uh, but very, very patient, well-constructed point from all four players. Oh, what a shot from Eva Radzikowska. Yeah, she's got, T Dawson's caught her a couple times early on. She was ready for that one. And the thing about Callan is he doesn't have a lot of shape on his ball. What I mean by that is there's not a lot of spin, not that traditional tennis stroke, but he really hits it hard. So uh, uh, those counterattacks and when he's speeding up, especially if he kind of jams you in the chest or upper chest, it's a lot to handle. Jamming up Tejas that time was Callan Dawson. Yeah, and that ace of spades paddle, a lot of pop. So mm. tough to control. If anyone can do it, it's Callan Dawson. But there's a lot of life in that paddle and a lot of power. Yeah. 
Oshiro was so strong with her defense. Yeah, and she switched it over to offense, kind of, uh, as I just mentioned with Callan Dawson, kind of catching Radzikowska up in the, in the upper chest neck area. Yeah. Oh, Callan Dawson snipes another shot through the partnership of Tejas and Radzikowska. Yeah, like I said, Callan Dawson, defensive specialist, as he just <laughs> rips offensive shots all, all day long. But he's got both. Yeah, he, he, does, he, he does have both. And, you know, that's I think that's a situation that a lot of players are in. It's you have those defensive skills, those are gonna be there for you. So why not try to incorporate a little offense into your game and then if that's not quite working, you can fall back on your defense. So I love that he's coming out and firing away and hey, it's not working out, he's not feeling it, then I can go back to being a rock. Especially to your point, being a veteran in this next wave of 48 players of up and coming top talents that are looking to break into the Premier League such an advantage for a player like Callan Dawson, mm -hmm. who's not a new player to the sport. He knows what he's doing, and he's got all the shots in his back pocket. Two parents that are pro pickleball players. Yeah. That certainly helps. Yeah, definitely. Built-in coaches. For sure. And <laughs> that, I mean, I remember when I first started six or seven years ago, there was a couple pickleball courts at the Encinitas Bobby Riggs Racket and Paddle. Now there, now there is all pickleball courts and no tennis courts. So very cool to see that transition uh, from them a little north of San Diego, one of the best facilities in the country. Just misses that time. The Bay Area Breakers are a team known to come back from any deficit on their side. Very nice Ale there from Bobby Oshiro, just pulling the paddle back, letting that drive sail along. Nice court awareness from Bobby. advantage of an interesting angle. Yeah, it's always a little funky when it comes off the tape like that. It, it seems like a layup and it's very easy, but it's always awkward when it clips the tape. Often throws off your rhythm. Nice concentration for Callan. Squeeze the first team to 11. We will change sides. And this is the biggest lead that the Squeeze have had in any of their games in this match series. Here's the context of what the significance of today and the remainder of MLP 2023 means. The Bay Area Breakers took down every team in MLP Mesa, which means they're at the top of the standings. So this is a big matchup for the Orlando Squeeze. Even if they can get well, the win that they got in, in the third game, but if mm -hmm. they could get a win over the Bay Area Breakers, that would help them tremendously here in the challenger standings. Yes, big time. And you can see the match wins lined up, then the games, and then the and then you have the point differential there. So you, you can see it all right there uh, on our graphic, and you're exactly right. To, <laughs> to first match of the tournament, to, to get a W over the defending champions would be absolutely huge, uh, not only to get that win, but moving forward in the tournament. 429 points won by the Bay Area Breakers. J.W. Johnson lingering in the crowd. So is Adam Stone's parents. Yeah, there's Mom and Papa Stone. They're, they're, they're somewhere. And we, with the Breakers, we have got to find a way to get Pablo Taylor's more involved. Mm. A lot of balls hit by Radzikowska. I know she's more comfortable with the cross-court dinks, but. Rally scoring, they've got time to do it, but. They've got to get it in gear quick. Ooh, Tejas asking you shall receive. There you go. Stone. Very nice job, uh, Tejas stepping to his left with the offense. But Radzikowska, like I said, loves to dink cross court. But if she can mix that pattern up and possibly go straight ahead to Oshiro, that could open up a few opportunities for Pablo. Should have introduced you as the prophet here in the uh, booth. Pickleball prophet. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> you can call me whatever you want. And, and it's 8 a.m. We're yeah, all here. That's right. And Tejas love what just happened. I know he missed, but I, I'm very very okay uh, with his shot selection and his court positioning on that point. Ooh, Dawson 
going right at Radzikowska. Do you like how far over he came for that ball? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I'm okay. That, that last one might have been overextension, but he caught her cross-court attacking a couple times. She was much more ready for that ball. Another error for Callan Dawson. A rare sight to see, but Radzikowska will take advantage with the serve back to Dawson. Yeah, that's that's that delicate balance we always talk about in mixed doubles. You know, it's there is a threshold. You want to put pressure, but uh, you know, if if you go too far, as we saw there, just nothing you can do with it. A battle between Dawson and Radzikowska. And you can see she tried to change the pattern and go middle, and she wasn't terribly comfortable. Often these players with really strong tennis backgrounds would much prefer to cross court dink than up the line dink. Mm, why is that? Uh, just It's just a natural pattern and a natural stroke coming from tennis. Uh, you have a lot more court to work with. It's a shorter court up the line, and I've seen it many, many times. Mm. Uh, and not that they're not very good at cross court dinking, but this is a chess game. You, If you get in a certain pattern, and you got to find a way to get out of it and vice versa. So, uh, very important. How about that shot from Bobby Oshiro sneaking one down the middle? Yep, she uh, froze her opponent in front of her, Radzikowska, who uh, was loaded up on that backhand side, and Bobby Oshiro putting that ball in the perfect spot. Oh, so good. Dawson started the point and finished it. Yes, so good. And I'll tell you what, lob, there, there's a couple other quality lobbers. Mm -hmm. I feel like my lob's decent, <laughs> but I really like to hit it out of the air. The control that Callan has off of the short hop, off of the bounce, is world class. And the precision and accuracy that comes along with it. I mean, it's just so delicate and just so well disguised. It is, it is literally zero, uh, no, no different than his dink. You cannot read that ball. the bell what it, 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 what caught your it eye was, it was definitely out oh, it, really? yeah it was definitely out the Which ball one? the ball that Tayez hit it's not not even a question in my mind uh the ball before He's going Pablo. For style points yeah so uh that's a tough break there for the squeeze they do have a commanding lead hopefully that one doesn't come back to bite them Oh, you're saying the one that Tay has hit prior. Yeah, prior, okay. exactly. I thought no, you meant yeah. the one that he no, hit. No, no, the slam. Yeah, was, that, that, that <laughs> was, was good like, to go. Well, he's gonna finish the point. Right, it's the previous ball. Oh, man, mini run here. Okay, things can get dangerous with Rowley scoring. Tay is with the serve. is finding some momentum here on championship court. That's right, and just a slight uh, hip check from Tejas right there on Radzikowska as they both went up for the overhead. <laughs> uh, you know, it's a, he's got that big lefty forehand, so she kind of cowered down and let him do his thing, and I think that was the right choice. The right choice, and a timeout called on the floor. Where are the squeeze starting to get in a little bit of trouble? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I said it when, when I said, I hope that call doesn't come back yeah, to bite them. So did. they still still are in a very comfortable position, but some really nice uh, uh, adjustments there from the breakers. Uh, as I mentioned, Teo's overextending a couple times, but giving good pressure. And Radzikowska a little more solid and kind of uh, mixing up her dinks a little bit more, occasionally going middle and 
and line as opposed to cross court, which is her favorite ball. So uh, I think it's some quality adjustments. And you have to understand in a match like this, Michelle, you're just going to have it. If you get off to a big lead, you're just going to have a natural little dip. You're going to come back to the uh, uh, to the middle a little bit uh, and not stay hot. So hard to stay hot for a whole, a whole match. So some slight adjustment from the breakers, but also just a little dip and level from the squeeze with that really, really commanding lead that they had a few moments ago. Redzikowska with the serve to Dawson. Phenomenal point from Eva Radzikowska. And also, here's another thing to think about, Michelle. She doesn't have a lot of experience in tournament play, so maybe some of those attacks from Callan were catching her early, and now she's seeing them more and more comfortable handling them. Adjusts quickly and on the fly. Not that time, though, as the Orlando squeeze desperately needed to break that run. Yeah, they did. And a great play from the, the breakers. I just hope it's not too little too late from them. Sure. Uh, well, you couldn't have said it better because he, he had a great ball jamming up Radzikowska, but that toe just on the line. Yeah. Oh, Pablo Tellez taking full advantage of the point and another small run here for the Bay Area Breakers. Yeah, that's right. And I was maybe questioning Radzikowska's fifth shot drive attempt, but when you got a, a you know, a, a strapping young lad for a partner with a big lefty forehand, you just go for it. Yeah. Callum Dawson coming through in a crucial moment of the game. Two points away from tying the series. Yes, just a little too much pace because I think Tayez, uh, I think Tayez kind of got what he wanted. Uh, he he's he knows that counters get, when, when Ed's, Eva Radzikowska attacks cross court, it's most likely to come back to him. So just a little late on the counter. successfully and so game point here on championship court Bobby Oshiro with the chance to close in oh Radzikowska goes right back Shiro, it works. Yes, very quality point from the breakers. And you saw Radzikowska two points ago kind of flopping from forehand to backhand, figuring out how she she can handle the Callan Dawson cross-court attack. So should she load up forehand or should she go with her more comfortable backhand side? Uh, let's let's see if she can figure that out in the waning moments of this mixed doubles match. Oshiro with game point. squeeze and we have our first dream breaker of the morning how were the Orlando squeeze not only able to hold court in this game but also come back in this series Adam oh it was an awesome job in those mixed doubles match they did a great job of of, of kind of isolating Radzikowska and, and not allowing Pablo Tejas to get as involved as he wanted to and just some really quality cross-court attacks from Callan Dawson Radzikowska couldn't quite figure it out in time how will these teams match up up when it comes to singles we will find out in just a moment but first time to check in with the winners Bobby Oshiro and Callan Dawson with Cameron Blackwood earlier we heard Todd say he really didn't want to go up against a left-hander because it creates a different strategy how did you tailor your strategy in order to have such a dominating performance against that team well I mean playing against that lefty you know you have him across the court from you so I just tried to do my best to keep some dinks cross court Pablo has some amazing hands so really had to be patient and pull the trigger on the right shot and Bobby it seemed like the Orlando squeeze came out a completely different team here in mixed doubles versus the first two gender doubles what was the discussion with your team before heading in 
Um, I think just uh, after, after women's doubles, you know, talking about that we still have the momentum going into men's and then going into mix, um, you know, just being able to be there for each other, supporting each other and bring the energy. There you have it. The Squeeze are taking this match into our Dream Breaker. First one of the day. Back up to you, Michelle. Cameron, thanks so much. So the Bay Area Breakers had to lay out their mixed doubles team first. So now they get their pick when it comes to who their matchups are in singles. That was crucial for the Orlando Squeeze to be able to pick yes. who they matched up against in terms of Fote not matching up against Teas. He did not want to play a lefty. Right. That worked out for them. So now... How does it work out in the favor of the squeeze when it comes to the singles matchup? Yeah, you always you always want to react. I mean, this you, you want as much information as possible. And when you're setting your lineup, you know, you're just kind of focused on you. But when you get to respond, that's a huge deal. You can pick your matchups. Uh, maybe you could possibly, if they have a great singles player, maybe you could sacrifice mm -hmm. one of your weaker players. Or you go, uh, you know, iron versus iron and just match up your studs together. So uh, it's uh, the Dream Breakers, as you mentioned, are a cool aspect aspect of the sport and I can't wait for our first one. So you have experience as general manager of one of the premier level mm -hmm. teams. So if you're managing the team of the Orlando Squeeze, how are you advising them to lay out their singles when you know what's coming on the side of the Bay Area Breakers? Right, so I would go, I would expect it to be, see, this is an interesting situation because we have a couple ladies who are pretty competent in singles and we have Callan Dawson who almost never plays singles. I mentioned no racket sport background, tennis for him, uh, doubles, way diff pickleball way different than tennis and singles a little more closely related so I would go Todd Fote number one Callan Dawson number two Bobby Oshiro number three and Rachel Redger number four mm. uh, I guess it's possible that they slip in one of those girls ahead of Callan Dawson but I don't think that they will and that's to get momentum going on your side early yeah, they, well, yeah that's right and I kind of think of it a little bit as it's kind of like a baseball batting order. Mm. So there's a situation, if you're going third or fourth, that your one and two player come up and you don't. So you really, you, you want to cater it to the matchups, mm -hmm. but you really want to get your best players as early in the lineup as possible. Because, you know, you bat number six in baseball, you might not get up in the ninth mm -hmm. inning where those earlier guys are going to. So you, you want to put talent first, but there is definitely going to be some specific matchups that you would possibly sacrifice that, Michelle. So for the squeeze, they will put their strongest batting order out first, per your analogy, and the Bay Area Breakers will be able to counter, and it might look in opposite fashion for them depending on who the squeeze put out first. Yes, and on paper, this is very much uh, the Breakers' uh, advantage when on paper. Uh, all four players are very quality singles opponents, and I would expect them to go with the lineup of Christian Alshon, Pablo Tellez, Eva Radzikowska, and then Rachel Summers. But really, all four players are more than competent on the singles court, and we have with the squeeze some mixing and matching, some players that play consistently, and some players that do not. So uh, when you're playing four, t four points at a time, Michelle, anything can happen. We saw several uh, teams in, in the MLP Mesa who were favored on paper not have the success they were hoping for. So this is going to be an exciting one. So we have the matchups, not the orders quite yet. Cameron Blackwood giving us those Pablo Tellez will match up against Callan Dawson Todd Fote will match up against Christian Alshon Bobby Oshiro against Eva and Rachel against Rachel Battle <laughs> of the Rachels. Rachel Recker taking on Rachel Summers and here is the order it will start with Todd Fote and Christian Elshon. Okay, so I was I was right so far, even though it was somewhat obvious. And that's why they pay you the big bucks as the GM, <laughs> right, Adam? <laughs> Early error for Fote. Christian Elshon, this is one of his specialties, is singles. A strong one tennis zero. background and his experience in the PPA Tour recently. Oh, what a passing shot, Christian Elshon. My goodness. And his uh, kind of combination of size and length and footwork and movement is top notch. a huge 3 nothing advantage for the Bay Area Breakers. Two phenomenal cross-court backhands from Christian Alshon. 
really getting himself in great position with that quality footwork, as I mentioned. One. They needed that one, needed absolutely. 3-1, one. One, 4 oh, huge difference. Uh, some uh, really quality shots from Alshon, but a nice job by Fo to pick up that last point. Uh, kind of avoid the 4-0 sweep, which is very detrimental. A lot of pressure on Callan Dawson, and just shy that time, Tinez will take the break. and a great job from Callan Dawson after an incredible serve from Pablo Tejas, uh, pinning da Dawson all the way back, catching the line, and Dawson got forward and hit a nice crisp volley. Yep, yep. Out, and there you can see the technique of Callan Dawson kind of holding that paddle higher and very difficult for him to create the top spin that is important in all aspects, aspects of pickleball, especially singles. Callan Dawson. Forehand volley opening, and so we move to the women's rounds of singles. It doesn't always match up like this, but Eva Radzikowska and Bobby Oshiro will square off for four points. Three, five. Honolulu, Hawaii native, yeah, Bobby Oshiro. Smooth as silk right there. Just wasn't in a hurry. Very nice on the drop volley. Yeah. Oshiro tying things up. That's huge. Yeah, we, I mean, I just love these matchups. We have someone in their mid-40s. We have a younger one tall, one short. You know, got all these contrasts and styles. It's so cool to see. Just wide for Oshiro. He formerly played college tennis at Boise State University. Radzikowska with the serve. Oh, just an unlucky bounce for Oshiro. The Bay Area Breakers back on top by two. So Rachel Summers and Rachel Recker take the stage for four points. Summers very confident. So reminder, both teams have two free challenges. We have yet to see a challenge after right. profiling that as a potential uptick. And so the Bay Area Breakers challenging the call of Rachel Rachel Retker yeah, and the Orlando Squeeze. Yeah, it was a very close call, but often when you see a, a player whose ball was called out as confident as summer. She walked straight to Courtney Johnson, the head referee, held her hand up. She was very interested in challenging that call right from the, the, the get-go. So I, I, not sure, obviously not sure if it will get overturned, but I think there's probably a decent chance that it does. Same thing in doubles. When you see, when you see both players call it in or out, it's usually the right call. If there's a little, you know, dissension or a little controversy, you know, one one says in, one says out, you know, that's a different situation. But when both players are confident or confident like Rachel was. Uh, ooh. Let's see, we got the replay. I see a little bit of green in between, but yeah, that is as I th close. I, I, think, I, I don't think that's going to get overturned, actually. I don't think so either. And thanks to our 360 camera views here on Championship Court. It does look like there's just a sliver of green in, in between. Just a sliver. Just a sliver. That's all it takes, though. And you might as well challenge it. You have two free ones to do it. And then you can continue. You don't have them taken away beyond that point. You can continue to challenge just the repercussion as if you're wrong beyond the two free ones. You lose Correct. And it's going to be interesting to see the team's kind of their strategy around the challenges and everything. When these rules are changing, uh, it might seem obvious, but there's probably like a little mini loophole somewhere. Or, or so, yeah, these, these, these players are so talented. Any little edge that you get with the rules or, or things you can manipulate, uh, all the GMs and coaches and owners 
owners and players are going to be looking for those opportunities. At least we're jamming on the break. That's right. Daytona Beach is bumping this morning. I have to say, uh, here a couple weeks ago for the PPA, and it was bike week. Oh. It was biker week, so it's a little calmer in Daytona sure Beach, and, I'm, characters and I'm, I'm not too upset about it. Cody <laughs> Johnson confirmed that the call is out, and so Rachel Recker stays honest with the call. The Bay Area Breakers lose that free challenge. They're down to now one free challenge on their side. Rachel Recker back to serve. Climbing within one. And a miss for the Bay Area Breakers. That's one of the maybe downsides of the challenge is you lose a little bit of momentum, perhaps. Throws you off if you are wrong. Could give you momentum if you're correct. Rachel Recker amping herself up, yes. that was a shot. Yeah, and some nice positive self-talk and getting some energy from her crew over on the sidelines as well, always helps. Recker, excuse me, Summers set herself up for that play, needed that point. She got it. And we have tie game here on championship court. Rachel Recker was ready for another <laughs> another round. Then she saw Alshon and was like, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> right. Alshon with a serve to Fult as they go for their round of four points. Alshon makes it look easy. Uh, I mean, I always say it whenever I commentate one of his matches, it just feels like we're the same person, Michelle. You know, just <laughs> I can uh, see it. body type, uh, <laughs> movement, uh, just easy power. You know, it's the same guy out there. I almost got you guys confused this morning. I'm like, wait a second, Christian, aren't you supposed to be in the booth? No, but, no, I'm Christian Elshon, not, not Adam Still. But you can see it. I mean, it, you said it perfectly, it just looks so easy. That was not easy. I mean, he was on the left side of the court, he explodes to the right, jumps up, and just slams a ball. That's not easy stuff to do, even if he makes it look so. And that's what good singles players do in this sport. Point construction, as you call it, and Christian Elshon, a master at that. Yeah, I mean, those were all great decisions. Uh, I, I think he, he, he ripped it when he had it, and he, he played soft and controlled when he did it. So, nice point by Christian. Elshon gaining house on his round of singles. The Bay Area Breakers, the first team to 11. We are switching sides. The Orlando Squeeze probably knew Elshon would be the toughest singles opponent in this group. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how do they continue to fare and come back in this one? It's uh, you just w when you're playing someone like that that you know can pretty much make shots from anywhere. Just k keep depth, keep him back, force him to maybe come up with something behind the baseline as opposed to stepping into the court. But you're exactly right, Michelle. I think that probably Christian Alshon and possibly Hunter Johnson, the two top guys in the challenger level in terms of singles, and you're seeing it. You're seeing exactly uh, that right here. Alshon looking to get. The crowd on their feet here at Pictona. All right, gentlemen, time in. 11, 8. Come on! Oh, just long. Foat says it. And we are looking at some speculation from Christian Alshon. I mean, looking to defer to Courtney Johnson, but you have to challenge it or. In ten, in 10 seconds, ten seconds. and they got two free ones. I think that's it, a great, free. the great aspect of the rule is the 10 seconds. Yeah, baby. No time to linger. How about that passing shot, Pablo Tellez with an easy backhand line shot. Well, I, I thought he was going to pass court. I so, did too. Yeah, I guess that's why I'm in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> but you look like Christian Elton. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, another cross court. Passing shot that time, showing his versatility. Yeah. Forehand to backhand, Callan Dawson looks puzzled. Yeah, I mean, you can see the deception. Callan Dawson, a phenomenal athlete and mover. Not even close to either one of those shots. Another 
Tough miss for Dawson. The Bay Area Breakers pulling away. 14-9. Yeah. Just wide. Nick Allen needed that miss for sure. He had to salvage. We saw that in the first matchup uh, uh, with, with Fote and Alshon right with the kick off this Dream Breaker. 4 0 3 1, big difference, salvaging that one point, a huge deal. Oshiro and Radzikowska back up for their rotation. Bobby Oshiro has arguably been the most consistent one on her side for the Orlando Squeeze and De Rachel Recker, the ladies. Definitely. Oshiro, she's, uh, she's a consistent player. Not a lot of mistakes. Let's see if she can come with some firepower as well. Oshiro. Yes, a drop volley, especially for the ladies, can be a very effective shot. And you can see Oshiro is very smooth on those slice drop volleys. Just on that time, Eva Redzikowska has a great tennis background in her own right, taking the three-point lead on her side. Picks it apart perfectly. I like that. And so I was kind of going to mention that she had not been looking to come forward, but she got a good opportunity in that point. Instead of hanging back, took the aggressive route and had a great cross court volley to end the point. Rachel Summers didn't like the first round when she came out in singles against Wrecker that time, taking care of business. Breakers so good in this Dream Breaker format. One of the main, many reasons that they won the championship in Mesa. So many of these games come down to, or matches, excuse me, come down to the Dream Breaker format. It's so crucial, as you know, in the drafting process to draft players that have strong singles ability as, as well. Rachel Summers sneaking a drop shot in. Yeah, great dip and topspin as Rachel Retger got her feet set too early and she paid the price. A little shuffle step uh, would have helped her a lot there, but a lot of angle and, and spin from, from uh, Summers causing that. The squeeze still alive. Rally scoring games 21. We freeze on 20, whoever gets there first. So Todd Fote has this match on his back and whoever else steps foot on the court on the side of the squeeze. Not going to cut it with that kind of error, so the Bay Area Breakers take game and notch point. Christian Elsha, the finishing winner on the side of the Bay Area Breakers. But my goodness, the Orlando Squeeze pretty much got as close as they could get in this one. But the Bay Area Breakers, the defending champs from MLP Mesa, come away victorious here in match number one on championship court. What did you like the most on their side? Well, it's, it's, it's tough when you win both the genders and you kind of have your level dip in the mix. You let the team back in. You had that commanding 2-0 Lee. All of a sudden, it's 2-2. So to stay focused and to, uh, uh, to know and trust your abilities on the singles court uh, is a really nice job after a valiant comeback from the Orlando Squeeze. We saw the standings and how every point impacts your ability to crack it. And the Squeeze still in good positioning, pushing this one to a dream breaker. But ultimately, the Bay Area Breakers defending their title, their standings, and their confidence. Our top 50 pro Cameron Blackwood is standing by with the winners. Eva, we talked earlier in the women's doubles about how crucial it was that you've been here before and the comfort comfortability that you had on the court. Had a strong 2-0 start, ended up losing both of the mix. How were you able to regroup this team around to get the win? I mean, if you have those two boys playing singles just ahead of you and setting you up for every point, you know, that the confidence is there. Um, you know, as, as I said before, just going through it, you know, we had some tough matches last time and that we finished in a dream breaker. So, um, you know, we all play singles. You know, I feel like we all feel confident if it comes to a dream breaker. So we're ready to go. 
and Christian just, or Pablo, sorry, I wasn't sure who was standing next to me, Pablo. Talk to us about going from the doubles mentality straight into the dream breaker, we have to switch to singles. Well, we're comfortable in singles, so we all like to play aggressive singles, and we're gonna stick to it. And Christian, how special is this team? Yes, you're trying to defend the title that you guys won in Mesa, but knowing that you fought back here in the first matchup in Daytona. This team's got a lot of grit, and we're gonna go all the way. There you have it. Dream Breakers are wanting to go all the way. You guys don't want to go anywhere. We'll be right back with another match here at MLP.